now you know how to pronounce it. <laughs> and you can see the inspiration that we had on the lighthouse and the canyon of the Nazare. That's how this design was, was made. That's the inspiration we took it from. And I'll let you see the whole system. Well, and now that you've seen a little bit of the system, cute, <laughs> thank you, man. Uh, you've seen a little bit of the system, uh, you've heard uh, the system as well. Let me tell you a little bit what were the guiding vision as well from a technical perspective, what drove us to, to the Nazare. Um, the Nazare and every Ineos product uh, is based on what we call the five pillars of what we think it's a good music streamer and server. So the first pillar is power. So all the power that needs to be um, managed for the system is of extreme importance. That's something that's very well known in hi-fi, but it's very, very important again for music streamers and servers as well. It's a very sensitive component. This needs to be dealt pretty much as much as a DAC or as a preamp. So it's very delicate and it needs the, all the power treated very, very carefully. So I'll delve a little bit into that in a while. The second pillar is network. So that's the input of the system, both in terms of controlling the system, but also for streaming as well. And it's a factor that only a few years ago, we thought it was a mere connection. Oh, all we need is a network connection, and that's it, it was an accessory. We now find that it's a full part of the system that needs to be taken care of if you want to have the very best hi-fi system. The third pillar is the processor. So it's processing the music. So not only from a hardware perspective, but also from a software perspective. One of our aspects that we take a great care is the synergy between the hardware and the software to make sure the parts are as simple as possible, that we don't interfere as little as possible with the signal to get it as pristine and well-timed as possible for the rest of the system. Then, we, uh, the fourth pillar is are the outputs. So we need to generate the outputs for, in our case, for DAX, or in some of the cases we didn't do the DAC, but for the case of the Nazare, we have the Nazare flow, which will deal with the different uh, outputs that are required by different DACs as well. So we're working together with DAC manufacturers to build dedicated links. We have one available for the MSB uh, DAC already within the flow. We're working with other DAC manufacturers in order to include more dedicated connections because it's very important to have as much of a direct link between the music server and the DAC. That is in fact one of the areas we consider today one of the main points of development, how to get more directly music in the, the, the PCM, the DSD audio from the music server into the DAC. And then finally, there's one important part that it's not merely aesthetics, which is the chassis itself, particularly aspects around EMI around vibration dumping. Um, elements like the Nazare, the Nazare Net, and the Nazare Flow, they have a lot of technology inside, and namely, we are using technology licensed from Tonio in order to dampen the vibration that we get on these kind of systems, even from speakers just making the the, the, all the metal vibrate, because aluminium is nice and it's very good in terms of EMI, but vibration-wise, it rings a lot. So we need to make sure that it's dumping and that vibration and that ringing does not go into the electronics where it has a negative effect. So this was a, a, a very um, summary of the several aspects. We'll go into each one in detail, but before that, I'll play you some more music. I'll play another track. Something that you, you might know very well already. So this is Aquamarine. Well, I think this gives you a bit of an idea of how these elements work all together 
to provide a more immersive sound, something that comes out of the speakers, that makes all the speakers go away and brings it much more forward in terms of the presentation and much more around you. But for that, it's also important to understand, okay, what part is the Nazareth playing here? So what we're going to do is I'm going to play you another song, and this time with some vocals as well, um, and I'll play it on the statement, and then I'll play it on the Nazareth. So they're doing exactly the same flow. In fact, the statement will be playing through the Nazareth flow in the Nazareth net as well. So it will be really a, a direct if the comparison between what the Nazareth is bringing versus what the statement is bringing here so that you can understand a little bit better the difference in sound that you get from both systems. So I will move just the USB cable here. And I hope this gives you a little bit of a glimpse of the difference you get when you have a very very nice deck in here. It's overall a very nice system. So we're using the CH Precision C10 deck here that our friends from <laughs> CH kindly <laughs> got us here. And uh, together with Dan D'Agostino Pre, with the M600 monoblocks and the Magico S3 speakers. And it's all cabled with transparent, using the transparent Power Wave X power conditioner. But I believe for that what we want to demonstrate here is how important it is to provide the very best signal to your hi-fi chain. And the rest of the components will all respond in kind. So we want to make sure that the signal is as pristine so that the rest of the components of the hi-fi can play as good as they can get. So if you provide them the very best signal, you'll show them all the capabilities. And We've seen time and again where uh, very fantastic hi-fi systems are actually being held down by the source because if the signal is not there and if you're getting already electrical noise going through the system, the rest of the system will only amplify that and make it more evident and just make things a little bit more foggy and just more uh, all together without separating voices, without separating instruments. So, with this, I'm going to tell you more, a bit more in detail, what we are bringing. So, what's different between the, the Nazareth and something like the statement, our previous, our previous flagship? Well, from the power perspective, um, what we have here is actually a very big evolution from what we have on the statement. So, first of all, we are using a completely new cutting edge generation of gallium nitride rectifiers, which, at least to our knowledge, is the first time this is applied to a music server in Hi-Fi for rectification, so for changing the AC to DC. We already used gallium nitride before, but we use it for regulation, just to regulate the voltage and to make the right voltage for the components, which we still use. But now we are using also for the AC to DC conversion as well. And that has provided a lot of gains in terms of rhythm, in terms of snap. It's much faster. So that means we managed to now get a much bigger capacitor band. So we have about 712,000 microfarads of capacitance on something the net, like the Nazareth. And also we have a completely dual power supply now. So we have a separate toroidal, separate inductor, separate ARC-8 system for the main board, and then another one separate for the precise USB and the precise net boards that you now develop. Um, this has provided quite a lot of gains. Even in terms of the gallium nitride regulator, we've now made the, a, a second generation of it with much better filters, which again provide an input. Um, together with that, we've developed new direct output ports. So the precise USB, the precise net. So the precise USB will connect to the flow, which deals with all the outputs. So right now the, the, the connections are from the Nazareth into the flow, and then from the flow into the uh, DAC. Uh, that connection, so that goes directly 
to the process that it bypasses everything else on the main board so that there's no interference. Same thing with the precise net board that connects now to the Nazare net that does the interface with the router here. Um, so that's something that it's completely different from uh, the statement. It's a completely new architecture uh, based on that one. Um, also, like I mentioned before, in terms of the chassis, we have integrated technology from Tonio in order to be able to reduce significantly the effects of vibration into the system. So these are used from the shields of the boards to prevent any outside influence from the shields itself because they are in direct contact with the boards. We're having it behind the regulators, which are usually very sensitive components, the ARC-8 capacitor boards, the main boards, the precise USB boards, the toroidal transformers and inductors, which tend to vibrate a lot. So those are all very detailed areas where we've done 3D simulations in MATLAB to understand where was affecting it, how was affecting it, and how we could dampen it in order to make sure we get the very best sound out of it. So this is kind of overview of what we, we have used. Right now, we don't have the final chassis for the Nazare net and the Nazare flow. Uh, that's why we're, we're presenting here just as a, as, a, as a facade. The electronics are here and they're, they're playing here with the system. This will, we expect to come uh, around the end of the year, around the end of Q4. Um, the Nazare itself we expect during Q4 to be able to launch worldwide for, for our partners. So I don't know if you have any questions that you'd like to, to ask or to know a little bit more in detail. If so, um, I'll be happy to answer.